Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I'm here with Brother Mark. 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 Um, talk a little bit today about uh, his journey with Islam and uh, a little bit of Ramadan in particular. So it is it's Ramadan now. So um, I guess first question: How's your how's your Ramadan going so far? Good. Very good. It's my second one, and uh, still learning. I, I'd say it's pretty good. So. As you say, just your, your second one, so your Shahada was um, just like the, the uh, last year, is that right? February 19th last year. Um, yeah, well, um, I guess if you just start a little bit about your background, like where you where you live now, where, where you uh, grew up, all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, um, well, I lived, in, I lived, I've lived in Concord most of my life. Uh, lived in San Diego for two, two, three years. Um, my parents were from uh, Quebec, Canada, so they're Im immigrants. Um, my mother was really spiritual and ca spiritual Catholic, but uh, unfortunately, she passed away when I was twelve. So after that, uh, I didn't have any interest at all in religion whatsoever until the present day, literally. Um, my feeling about God was that he was completely deist and that he, whatever happens is meant to happen. Organized religion re wasn't really the thing for me at the time, so. Things have changed. <laughs> it's a, a, a spiritual but not religious kind of. I've, I've heard that um, a lot of other you know, kind of new Muslims as well. It's like you have the feeling that there is something greater, but not yeah able to connect it to something. You can't understand it, and I couldn't really go back to Christianity. It was just it, it, honestly, it was confusing. I had spent one year in Bible school just right after my mother died, and it was not the best year for me. So we had moved to San Diego for her treatment, and I didn't know anybody, didn't have any friends. And, uh, well, I mean, they're, they're good people, they're nice people, but if you don't know somebody personally, you just tend to get lost in the, in the background. It's totally different in Islam. Well, I guess to, to your last year sort of experience, um, you sort of mentioned, um, you know, talked talk previously, you just had kind of a moment, I guess you could share a little bit about like um, the, the sort of epi epiphany moment, if that's not the right kind of approach, is to sure. what, what caused, caused you to be a seeker, and then sort of how that uh, process unfolded. Okay, well, it began in the mid-90s when I picked up a copy of Malcolm X's autobiography. And at the time, I was just looking for pointers on how to uh, publicly speak, you know, forcefully, but not overbearingly and yeah, I'd read all his early things and then I, then I started reading his thinking after he made Hodge and he, can, he completely turned around his thinking about race because you know, he went to Hodge and he was seeing you know, uh, whiter, whiter skinned Muslims from Central Asia and stuff and he, he's like he was stunned Everybody was all the same. So uh, Malcolm X came back and he, he publicly refuted his previous beliefs about race. And that, was, that really stuck a chord with me. So it was his last recorded speech in uh, February 1965. And he just made a few words about that. I was wrong. You should never judge somebody just because how they look. And that, that that was a major epiphany right there. One of three, maybe. Um, the second, um, 
The second I had a, a, a heart problem in 2020, and it, this actually happened, happened at the hospital, so I was lucky there, but I was having a stress test for heart function, and I collapsed. And uh, luckily, they had a surgeon on duty. So this was April, about a month after COVID had really started. So there was nobody there. And they, they, were, rushing, they were rushing to get me prepped. And I, I started receding a little bit. They had not hooked me up or given me any medication, but I had the sensation of being pulled out of my body just a little bit. And that there was nothing really profound about it, except that it was totally unemotional. And I didn't even have any fear of having no emotions about it. It was completely neutral. And the, the, everything in the room lit up just a little bit, had an inner glow to it for a few minutes. And I'm thinking, uh, wow. At the time, you know, I, I was, I don't know if I was near death or anything because they, they hadn't hooked me up or anything, but I finally figured out that, that there was something like that will happen after you pass away. What you do in life will kind of reflect your experience. So the way I thought was uh, if you don't believe in anything, you're not going to. That's. I didn't believe in anything. That's what I got. So that, that was the second one. So I was thinking about religions, going back to Catholicism. Going back to trying, going to the Eastern Orthodox. And I, I was on the fence for a little while. And then my daughter was born in August. She had not been born yet. So, so she was born. And that, that was great and everything. But the way I grew up, Unfortunately, my dad was not around very much. He, he was a very good, very good man. But he grew up in a large family where um, my grandfather had passed away when he was three. So there was no male role model in his family to, to show the, the three brothers how to act like fathers. And, you know, he provided for me took care of me, but he wasn't able to spend time alone with me, and things like that. I can't remember one, one single instance where he was comfortable doing that. And it was like that all my life. And, and so when I had my daughter, I, I was a little unprepared and uh, I, was, I, I was panicked having these feelings of panic, but what am I going to do with this? What, what's best for her? Should she stay with me or should, should, should I, you know, talk to my wife and maybe have them go back to the Philippines? My, my wife is Filipino and she has a huge family over there and I, I'm thinking, well, is this best for my daughter or is this best for me? Am, am I letting her go just because I don't know what to do? Or is it something else? So I, I figured it was something else. So where am I going to look for, for answers? And, and when I was thinking about this for, for two or three weeks, I was very upset. I was crying all the time at work. It's probably the worst thing in my life for, for a few few weeks like that. I, I didn't know what I was going to do with my daughter. And um, finally, I, I thought of thought of the Quran, 
And I was wondering how uh, the Prophet وسلم, raised Fatima alayhi salam. And it was like that. I, I figured this out and I finally, I, I remember I was at work, I was outside and I just took a moment and I said, Allah, if you're really there, and you, if I ask, I'm going to pray to you for help. I'm going to reach out with a hand. And he, he, grabbed, he grabbed that hand. He grabbed my whole arm. He grabbed my whole body. He said, Here, here's what you're going to do. And all that self-doubt just went away. I, I mean... It was such an intense moment, Kevin, that I, I almost passed out. But I, there are very few times in my life where I've had so, felt so feelings of such gratitude for having that answer. And you know, we were talking in the car. There, there's certain words. There are certain things we don't have words for. But this is one of them. And I. Yeah, that, that was that was even worse than being in the hospital, not knowing what to do with my daughter. So, so after that, um, the world just lit up. And I'm, I'm not going to say it's easy or anything being a parent, because um, I work as a public school custodian, I'm not a millionaire, right? So, so we go through the little struggles, little struggles of life and things, and that's fine. I have confidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for me. And I owe him. And it's even even that word is not sufficient. It's I want to be with him. So one of the first things I really understood about Islam was never ever doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's capacity for for mercy. Never, never doubt it. No matter how deep you are in sin, whatever you've done, um, you can just, at any time, you can stop what you're doing, turn to Allah with a pure heart and say, I'm sorry, Allah. Please forgive me. You can do this anywhere, anytime. And I think it's probably unique to Islam. Of course, we have Salah in it, all, all, all of our rituals, but it is literally true that at any time, if you're having a tough time, you can stop what you're doing, and just clear your head a little, a little bit and just say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please, please forgive me for what I'm doing. Please forgive me for what I'm thinking. Help me. And he, he always does. He always does. Sometimes it's not noticeable at first. But as, as a Muslim in Islam, to me, the most important thing is to never doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's capacity for infinite compassion, infinite mercy. And he is the creator of the seven heavens and the earth. He can do anything. And he does not need us. He does, doesn't need me. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need Islam. Nothing takes away from his greatness at all. And yet he still loves us. He loves you. He loves me. He loves my daughter. He loves everyone here. He loves non-Muslims. And I'm rambling on a little bit, maybe. <laughs> um, but he created all this, and he gave us, the, as human beings, to understand that someday we're going to die. And we don't think about it very much, but Muslims do, and we're okay with it, but more so than you know, most other people. And we know it's going, going to happen to us. The most important thing is to never, 
lose faith that Allah will, be, will give you mercy if you ask for it. That's what I truly believe. Just so powerful, and I can't. I to take a minute because it. Maybe we should have talked a little bit before. Well, we got <laughs> experience. I knew. I, 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 uh, wow. Yeah. Um, I, I knew it was heavy, but that's really a lot. Like the, in a single year, to go through that. I mean, out of body experience, which. You know, I've heard of, I've certainly have, have never had the people understanding, as you said, you felt yourself leaving your body. And that's like so many people were wrapped up in the, the dunya in the world. Yeah. They don't understand even that there's a difference between their self and their body, right? Like the, um, so to have that reality just so in, you know it, in your face you know and, yeah. and un, undeniably um kind of put to you um you know can, can only imagine how powerful an experience that must have been and and sort of difficult to process this brother i mean i just i felt nothing i felt no fear no joy there was nothing and there was no fear of feeling nothing I was just literally, oh, am, I, am I about to die here? And no, no, I didn't. So uh, I remember that a male nurse came in and he cracked a little jug out. Let's get this party started and die. And they're wheeling me into surgery. I am laughing because of this guy's little joke. I'm laughing at the doctor. He's trying to put the stent in and I'm just laughing and laughing and laughing and and he's kind of looking at me, what's the matter with you guy? <laughs> so yeah, um, heart surgery is usually a frightening thing, but I didn't have time to get frightened or, or God, I, I just went to that hospital just for a test and I, I had I had no idea I had a heart problem. I had no idea all this was going to happen. I, I was not prepared to be in the hospital for three days, but it was fine. Um, the early days of COVID, everything was locked down. There's no visitors or anything like that. But I, I pulled through, I'm fine. And then the thing with my daughter happened and wow, it, it cinched the deal. And, I am so profoundly grateful to be leaving this earth as a Muslim, even if I'm not the best one. I'm not, but I am so profoundly grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for, for helping me, and it, it was really, like I said, there's no words for it, brother. And I can really kind of only imagine. I think every people do have a sense. You know, inshallah, people will, will, will be able to still connect. I, I think you've done a pretty good job of conveying it. It's, it is transcendent. You know, they say like Subhanallah. It, it's that's really all you can say. Like the the fact that you just so happen to be at the hospital right at that time is like that was like a, a, a miracle. Um, to you know that. Allah is the best of planners. I think that, I mean, I, I don't think I think we know, right? Like, Allah wanted you to be here today, Allah, you know, to be here with us, to be here for your daughter, to have that experience. And you just had to go the way that you did. Um, no, no, only Allah knows his, his plan and, and, the, and the, the wisdom in it. But um, clearly, Allah wanted you to be here with us today. And, and um, yeah. And, and and to go through that experience so that you could get to where you are today, and um, yeah, Subhanallah, it's just it's it's so amazing. And then with the, the the experience with with your daughter, you know, we always that that was wow. You know, being a parent was just at my age. I'm fifty six, and 
I mean, it, it's an enormous blessing, of course. Of course, she, she's a lovely girl. I have pictures and stuff I'll show you later, but I had feelings of inadequacy and that I'm not good enough for her. And I mean, you know how it is. You feel that way. You just, she deserves better. I'm her father. Like want the best for her, and then the the deepest part of you. I I don't didn't know what was the best at the time. Like she would, I she's not she went she has to be with her dad. Twenty years from now, when I'm not here, you know, well, I might be here. I don't know, but forty years from now, fifty years from now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even then, still, inshallah. But um, yeah, like that. Inshallah, also, she's, she's still here. Those memories, that time is um, irreplaceable. And that's, yeah, you're not, not a millionaire, but all the same. Like, there's, you know, there's there's children of millionaires we know of, right, who have difficulty adjusting in the world because their parents were out getting those millions of dollars and, and they didn't have the experiences with their parents. That, you know, I've heard people say they would trade all that money to have had presence of their parents in, in their yes. life. And then having, with, with your background, having, you know, your, your mother died so young and limited time with your father as well um, to, to sort of be able to turn the ship and, and, and be for your daughter as well, which your, which your father wasn't able to be for you as well. And to find, as you said, like that father figure question, which can, can loom, really large and if, if so if you don't have it how do you do it right well, yeah. what model do you take from and that you that you turn to the sunna um and that that right, like a, a lightning strike sort of even if you didn't have all the answers right like you had a it sounded like you had a what the right word is like understanding or, or sort of conviction that you could figure it out is it that well i like to think of it this way uh if you're lost today's age, you can pull out a little little thing, a GPS, find out where you are. So our, our GPS as Muslims is the Holy Quran. That's it. If you want to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's made it very clear how to do it. And maybe it's human nature to look for shortcuts in certain parts of our life, but there are no shortcuts with with the Holy Quran, I mean, it's the way. You try to innovate a shortcut, it's not going to work. And you feel it in your heart, you know. How can I get an edge? How can I get an edge? We feel this in so many parts of our lives, but it doesn't work when it comes to our, our existence and our relationship with our Creator. So, so being a Muslim, of course, has its challenges and things, but again, you always default that you can ask Allah anytime for help and his capacity for learning and for li listening to you and understanding and, and giving help, it's infinite. If you can create all this, is it is mercy you commit any kind of sin, any bad thing, and you truly feel sorry for it, you can turn to Allah with a pure heart, say, I am sorry, Allah, and be completely 100% assured that he will forgive you. And that's what I believe as a Muslim. It, it is solid as iron. Yeah, I don't know. You you may probably have heard this story before, but there's the there's the parable of the man who uh, oh, prayer time. <laughs> See the prayer. Sorry. Um, the the man who loses his uh, camel in the desert, like goes to sleep, and the, the camel goes off. Yeah. He's like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then the camel kind of miraculously comes back, and that gratitude of seeing it again, um, and that's how grateful Allah is every time we return, and and make toba and. Uh, repent for whatever it is that we may have gone through. Um, or, 
just turned this off. I'm sorry. Oh, good. We're, we still got like 20 minutes before we're in there. Okay. So, but, um, yeah, that kind of kind of always stuck with me is that, like you said, that the capacity for mercy, that we start Bishmi Alak Manahim, you know, like to everything because it's 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 so essential. Um, and, this, and especially if you're in a situation, like you said, questioning maybe your, yourself, your capacities in any way, shape, or form. Um, and that's, you know, they say the, the whispers of shaitan is always trying to get you into self-doubt um, and, and, and that sort of spiral. Um, but that you, you, I mean, subhanAllah, it's, it's really honestly powerful how your conviction, like your and conviction is probably not even, you're the certainty almost that you seem, to, at least I, I take it. In, in uh, I'm not absolutely certain that there's nothing of course, you know, the, the thing about idolatry, you, you can't die with, you know, in that condition. You, you're not going to be forgiven, but everything else, everything, everything, everything else, anything. You know, a brother, a brother in uh, Australia, Mohammed Hablos, I, saw, I started listening to him, and he, re, he struck a chord with me. So in Australia, a lot of Muslims fall into the, you know, the, the gangster life. They're, they're attracted to it. And he has a particular specialty of bringing people back. That's his thing. So, so before I got married and, and before all this happened, during the 80s and 90s, I was... There was very little I haven't seen, very little I haven't done that you know, Muslims wouldn't do. And no matter what, there was always a feeling of emptiness. It, it never, you can never get, to, you can experience something the first time, but you can never get that experience back with, with things. Except in Islam, you always get that same feeling that comes back. In that, um, there are no limits with, with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, so what I'm what I'm talking about here are, are drugs. So, you know, you can you can get intoxicated on whatever not whatever it is. And the first time is usually the best time, the most intense time. And when you're on, on these things, you're, you're trying to get that feeling back. It never comes back. It's never quite the same. You're always trying to chase it. And eventually, you just feel empty. What am I doing? Well, what's the point of all this? Except in Islam. That, I mean, there is no ceiling to it at all. And it is so powerful. It, there are just no words for it sometimes. And so, Islam is... Uh, Islam is the salvation of humanity. I'm, I'm convinced of it. And of course, we don't. nobody can be forced into it. To want it, you have to want to be a Muslim. And if you make that choice, I think it's a good choice. <laughs> I appreciate your um, honesty about the the background. You know, drugs, alcohol is something that very prevalent in this world right now, um, but also like sort of taboo and. Um, Sometimes I have a hard time addressing it, you know, as a community, and like um, it, it, it's good to be able to be open so that people can kind of hear, like, identify with that experience and still know, like, there's there's a way out. Just because you did drugs once or one hundred times or a thousand <laughs> times, whatever, like, it's you always can make that return. Yeah, and that that it is like the the craving, right? Like, it can never be. 
totally satiated, right? Um, or, uh, whereas, say, with, with Islam, it's like there is salam, that, that, that peace. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, you sure yes. can probably tell that like, you really do radiate a sense of contentment and, and peace. Like, it's, it's really kind of amazing. Um, here in all, I mean, 2020 is, feels like a lifetime ago, but it's actually not that long ago. No, and, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, come on, like, it's just, wow, I, you know, I, I, inshallah, many of us can, like, get get to the point where you are with that, that with being as at peace and as certain of our end destination as, as, um, as you seem to be. Like, it's, it's, um, Inspiring for me. Take a breath. Okay. Hold on. That's, I mean, it's just heavy, heavy stuff. Um, and yeah, you you seem to be handling it so 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 very well. Um, yeah. Uh, when you contacted me, brother, I, I just you know. Yeah, I, I was figuring that. Yeah. For, for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for me, I just, I had to make the effort to come here. And, it, you know, it, it's, my car, my personal car needs attention. Otherwise, I would have driven here. But because of other things in my life, I just haven't been able to come to, here to MCC in East Bay. Um, I, I have to stay close to Concord, and uh, I, found, I found a masjid just within walking distance, and, which which was amazing. <laughs> That's the dream, sort of, right, for a lot of it, not always, oft, not often achievable in America. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's, that, that's very good. But you did, you took your shahada here. Yes. I said, um, it was Brother Mati. Say, yeah, it was Brother Mari and um, Sister Edelin. She she played a major major part in getting me here. So you know, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless her and, and Brother Manier and you. And I, I mean, I'm so grateful for all the Muslims I've met. There's, there's such open people, there's such giving people, genuinely caring. How I measure caring and how a person is genuine is if I could leave my daughter with them. I know I could leave my daughter with you and she'd be safe. Uh, I've known you for what, what, 30 minutes? I could leave my daughter with the sister Edelin here, no problem, I wouldn't worry about it. But Brother Manier, no problem, wouldn't worry about it. And that's like coming from the uh, background. I'm similar. I kind of took my shot at very young and was not a great Muslim for a long time. But it was that autobiography of Malcolm X that really um, hit me as well. And that's like the the uh, like the oneness of Allah also being reflected in the the oneness. Certainly, we're made from different tribes and have different backgrounds and different life experiences and all that. But that that sense of community and oneness. Um, that, that, that Malcolm represented so well when he spoke about his Hajj experience, um, you know, growing up in this country with the sense of division and your sort of a culture to think of people as separate and it's like a zero sum game. We're all fighting each other for limited resources, um, and then that there's just this totally other um, approach out there that really um, it's it's amazing if if you haven't experienced it before. And, Oh, that's I, I can only imagine the kind of the conquer basha. You, you walk in, you don't know anybody, and kind of hit the ground running like it's your home, right? Like yeah, day I mean, one. I had that feeling when I first walked into the masjid and conquered. I didn't know anybody in there. I had no idea it was, it was there. It used to be a union hall twenty years ago, and that there's nothing to indicate that it's a, a masjid. Just a tiny little sign as you drive by. I uh, we went to afternoon prayers yesterday, and wow, the, the whole, everybody was there. And I talked to the director of uh, of the masjid, and he 
says, wow, we have 600 people here. We're, we're mostly from Afghanistan. Uh, most of us came during the 90s and, and then not so much recently. But uh, the, the, there is an influx now uh, of people coming from Afghanistan. And we're, you know, we're trying to help them out and get them jobs and furniture and get their schooling arranged. And, and they are exceptionally friendly people. It's very different walking into a masjid than anywhere else. Because for me, I just feel instantly at peace. This is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's open to anyone, anytime. Not literally, but you know. It's what it's here for. Fall in line with the prayer and just whatever, doctors, kids, you know, elder, millionaires, homeless, anybody can come in and we're all in that same line, we're all doing the same salat, and we're all wishing each other salams the same. It's, yeah, it's for, you know, for a lot of viewers probably are Muslim and they're like, yeah, we, we know this, right? <laughs> yeah. There's just so yeah. many people in this country, you're like, that doesn't, does not compute, right? It's, it's, no. yeah. A lot of non-Muslims in, in our country, they just don't, they don't, just don't quite understand that. Um, hopefully, just by by being a good example as reverts, that that that, that sort of dawah I think is the most effective. Just, but just being a good example as a Muslim, being the best you can, and. Most people don't even know I'm Muslim because usually I don't. I don't. I don't wear a kufi usually. I just I wear a kafea instead. I prefer it. So, aside from that, you know, you wouldn't know I'm Muslim. But I am. I'm very grateful to be. I, I guess um, I do one because it is Ramadan. This is the, the Ramadan series. I don't want to um, forget to just sort of to, to mention um, what that's like. I know I haven't had health issues as well. Uh, you know, there's there's mercy in it for you if, if if it's not in the best interest of your health. Obviously, you can do what you need to do. Um, but I just uh, it's kind of interesting, especially so close removed, I guess, to to your health issues. Um, but last year, when you when you took your shahada, what was like that first Ramadan experience like for you? Were you able to do the fasting and? Um, well, I realized very early on that I cannot go through the daytime without drinking water because I tried and I ended up in the hospital twice. Going to the hospital is denying someone else who might be in deeper crisis than me. And I'm taking their spot for something I did voluntarily. So I, I do have to drink water and electrolytes during the day. But I assure you, I, I share the hunger pangs of every other Muslim. In a couple hours, I'm going to be starving just like everybody else. And at least I can share that. And um, I'm grateful for that. Well, and, and also, just be a reinforcement. You're not just taking a space at the hospital or somebody needs it. We don't want you, Allah does not want you to harm yourself. No, no, no. Either, no, right? And, and none of us, you know, do either. So, um, yeah, I appreciate your, your sincerity with, with that as well. A lot of people I know like struggle with health issues and then like taboo, like, oh, well, why aren't you fasting? Or, you know, like, whatever. It's like, no, it's, it's between you and Allah and ultimately. Your your health is what's important. Like a Muslim, not a masochist, right? Like you're not here to, right. to harm yourself. Right. Um, that's Allah wants these for you. I wish I could remember. It's just a verse of Quran we did um, last night about specifically this, right? Like the, if there's illness, then there's um, ease that comes with a hardship. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you're not beating yourself up too bad. It's not like you went through it a little bit. Like you, you really pushed yourself to the limit to the point you got hospitalized and then did it again. Well, 
I mean, my Shahada, you know, I got I was excited and stuff, and Ramadan was coming up, and of course I wanted to participate in it, and it's not easy. <laughs> you know, um, but I just found out early on I can't go go without water without ending up at the hospital, and that's not that's not cool. I mean, we, we we need you to be around for your daughter, and so right? Yeah. Well, I. And, I mean, I'm taking up the space that somebody else needs to be there, so. No, I, again, I really appreciate that. And just back a little bit, I'd, it sounds like your 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 wife and, and the rest of your family, there's sort of no other Muslims. You're the only Muslim in your family. Am I, yes. Kind of how has it been with um, your Shahada with, with your family? Um, so before my daughter was born, about a year after we had gotten married, I, 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 w I was thinking about making shahada then. So I was discussing with my wife a little bit, and she's, well, you know, look, I married a Christian man. I, I, she, she wasn't totally against it at that time. In the Philippines, 10% of the population is Muslim, 90% isn't. The people get along and stuff, but Muslims kind of want to be in their own region of Mindanao where they're in the majority. And we were in the part of the, I'm, I went over there to see her and she lives in a part where the Muslims are in a minority. and I. I I remember we were going through uh, shopping malls and things, and uh, Muslim Filipino women were, were sort of like huddled together and kind of, they looked a little frightened to me. They looked a little uncomfortable. And I guess it's just, that's just a cultural thing over there, but. So anyway, um, after I had my, my health crisis and stuff, and I, basically I told my wife, I'm going to make shahada. You need to make a decision for yourself because this is between uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and myself. I've made my decision. And she, she didn't hesitate at all. She's fine with it. That's, that's great. I'm, unfortunately, I heard a lot of stories where it, it is a source of friction and, and difficulty, and um, well, may, may Allah reward her for opening up her heart and, and um, staying together as a family. Um, the great benefit in that. As well. um, yeah, wow. And I have to say that. How, how's your daughter? I, I, um, I'll show you my daughter in a, in a few minutes. She's uh, very precocious, almost three years old. She's learning to talk now, and um, unfortunately, where we live, there's no other kids for her to play with, and we haven't had that much opportunity with COVID to to go out to go out and things, and she's been a little isolated, and the time has come for her to start interacting with other kids. That was one of the things I was really, really stressing about. That staying, staying with us where we are, rents are very high. We can't relocate to a neighborhood with a bunch of kids around. So, but on the other hand, you know, I work for the school district, and I can bring her to work with me if I want to. And I get along with staff. All, Pretty well, so I can sort of like shoe, shoe horn her into uh, you know being around other kids when she's ready. Yeah, that's another one of the, the crazy things of COVID, like the isolation, difficult for like adults, right, to handle it. You know, yeah, we only imagine like it's kind of her only frame of reference, right? But it's not. 
healthy, like a little right long term, you do need socialization. You got to be around yeah. other people. So, inshallah, she's she's able to get that soon. Um, yeah, get, get get into that age. It sounds like. Um, well, yeah, man, I asked uh, sort of a tangent, but um, yeah, also taking shahada in the middle of COVID. We've also kind of been locked down as well, and a little more isolation than there there otherwise would have been. Um, kind of, what has that experience been like? I mean, it sounds like you've, you've actually done pretty well finding the the mosh in Concord and, or Concord and being able to, to come out here a little bit as well. But um, I guess you probably didn't haven't got to have like the big community iftars and, and kind of any point until I guess maybe this year or. Not yet. That's the way I look at it. Not quite yet. Um, there's, a, there's one other thing in Islam and Muslims. Um, health. Mental health. It's okay to go to a doctor and get, get treatment. It's okay. If you're de so depressed and you're doing Salah and everything and it's just if you need medication for it, get medication for it. These people are professional. They're, they're not here to push drugs on you or, or try to bring you away from from Islam. They're, they're, I mean, these things allow, allow you to function. You know, because I, I do have major, I do have major depression, and I, I, I've been taking medication for it for long time so so if you're feeling this way don't there's no reason to suffer through it it's fine just go to the doctor and it's okay it's okay to understand it's okay to say to yourself that you know I have a mental problem and you know it's just like a physical disease there, there's really no difference if you have a broken leg, you need to put it in a cast. It's only going to get worse if you don't. Right. You gotta. It'll heal the the body. The self wants to heal, but you have to to help. Yeah. To, to do. Yeah. And the medication just treats your just treats your problems. It doesn't take you take you away like other drugs. You know, it's, it's very targeted. So. Not gonna. Most people don't get get really heavy side effects from these things. And the other forms of therapy, like you know, just talking to a therapist, and don't hesitate. <laughs> don't listen to this man. He knows what he's talking about. Um, and then, brother Kevin, you, I'm usually not gregarious like this. I am a very quiet, reserved guy. Aside from Islam, I'm, I'm the quiet guy. <laughs> I, I, may Allah reward you for it. You know, that you said there's no, it, there's such bounty in Allah's capability. And, and I'm, I'm even forgetting like the, the right words here, but it's just it's, you know, sort of reminding like, and so like, who, all the people that watch this video, all the benefit, any benefit that any of them take um, throughout maybe the years, you know, you put something on the internet, it, who, who knows where it'll go or, or whatever else, but, you know, Allah's going to reward you for whatever benefit people take away because of you taking the effort to come here today, like the multi-hour commute that you did on short notice and being so open and um, vulnerable and truthful. Um, I think that'll, it, it's very beneficial for a lot of people to be able to hear. I can only imagine from various different perspectives of all the things that you, you've touched on and have gone through. Um, yeah, SubhanAllah, like, people will, you will be rewarded for all of that benefit. And um, it won't take away from, you know, like you inspire somebody to go out and do a good deed. They get the full reward, but then also you do. And it's it's, it's like the, uh, because Allah is, is, is infinite and he can do that. And um, SubhanAllah, it's really a, beautiful thing so I so said I really appreciate you you coming out today and for being so open um, in so many so many ways um, 
I guess if we just conclude, if there's anything that you would want to share with any um, new Muslims out there, um, anybody who's even considering Islam or, or whatever else, um, I have to, to put you on the spot. But like any any particular jewels or gems that stuck with you or have been particularly important to you that you, you think people should should know? Um, two two fifty six. There's no compulsion in Islam, but nobody can force you into this. You're here by choice. But I became a Muslim by my own free will and being shown the way by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody is forcing me to stay. I stay because it's right for me. And if you, if you fall off your iman, things happen, you end up committing a lot of sin. You don't do your prayers. You don't do. You don't follow what you're supposed to do. But you at least continue to recognize Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is your Creator. He has no equal. He, there's no, nothing like Him at all. You. You can stop what you're doing at any time. Turn to Him with pure heart. Just pray. Just ask. You know, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Please, please forgive me. I made a mistake. You can do this any time outside of Salah. And rest assured, He will hear you. And he will grant you that mercy. I, I truly believe that. It's true. I, 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 I may be quoting it wrong. I, I think I remember hearing the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam someone who would say, Esther for Allah, you know, ask for forgiveness 70 times a day. So like, if the Prophet Muhammad needs to Ask for forgiveness 70 times a day. What about us? Yes. Um, so uh, no shame in doing it and, and, um, and returning and returning and returning. It's, it's definitely a very important thing, I think. Yeah, our, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, what a remarkable guy. Wouldn't we all like to meet him? The way he raised uh, Fatima, alayhi salam, uh, that just answered all my questions as far as raising my daughter. It, it gave me the confidence. As that, you have, you have the best role model. Yeah, yeah. That you could that it could possibly be, and then yeah. and, and then with that, the confidence that you can you can do this, too. That's so beautiful. I've heard so many Sunnah stories, you know, kind of in my life. I, I um, admit that that's like a new one that somebody, I mean, certainly it was like prophetic parenting. You, you know, we've heard, heard a lot about that, but that, um, it, that powerful, that that's what drew you into the Dean, like literally, um, subhanAllah, that's uh, a message on the power of prophetic parenting, I think, for, for people who might... Uh, Need, need that reminder. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yeah, I guess I'll kind of leave it at that. I really, again, greatly appreciate you coming out. Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you. Inshallah, folks out here find, find it beneficial. And, um, yeah, inshallah, we, we see you. Get to see you some of these community stars sometime. Get that, that car fixed, inshallah. And yeah. um, things yeah. will continue to open up. And, um, yeah, hopefully this this religion will continue to be um, benefit to you, and you continue to be able to kind of taste the sweetness of it, and, and um, yeah, for for many years to come. Inshallah. So, so one thing, brother Kevin, before we stop, um, so far in my journey in Islam, I don't really understand the concept of personal reward and doing something. Kind of coming here today, just it it, it felt right to me. I didn't have anything particularly planned for today, but you know, I want to get back to my, my wife and daughter and go out and stuff. But I, I don't understand the reward system right now in Islam. Um, it exists for a reason, I'm sure, but that's not what motivated me to come here. It was just... And that's why you get the reward. If somebody, if somebody gets something out of this, I mean... This is not excessive piety, but it's almost, I want the reward to go to them, not to me. I have the reward. 
I've found that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm a Muslim. That's the reward for me. And until I, I um, understand more of this, this thing in it, of our religion, um, I, I, you know, it, it's enough. This is enough to be Muslim and to know, to know why you're here and who brought you here. And, and one more time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you fall into sin, his capacity for, for forgiveness, for forgiveness is as great as the universe is he's created, the, the seven heavens and the earth. Created all of this, he can certainly forgive you and, and, and reward you. I will be in, in this life or the next, or both. Inshallah, we will reward you in this life and the next. And the, the main thing is in the next, I think. Which so you're you're, you're well aware we're, we're all heading there. Yeah, we don't know when, but we're all going to get there. And um, when, when that day comes, the the your good deeds. And, the benefit that comes from them will, will be there for you. It's like a treasure chest, like a retirement fund. You know, every good deed that you do between now and then, it's, 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 it's going to be there for you, inshallah, when you, when you get there. So, um, uh, Like everybody else, I'm going to I'm gonna beg Allah's forgiveness for not worshipping enough, Him enough. Um, the angels, they spend billions of years worshipping Allah. They feel the same way. At the day of judgment, they will ask him to please forgive us. We didn't worship you a lot, subhanahu wa ta'ala, properly. Please forgive us. And they spent their whole existence, you know, in prayer. So it's, it's the great equalizer. You can't, you can't get there by stuffing, you know, $100 bills into the collection box every day. You can't buy it away. Thank you again. Um, yeah, it's really inspiring for me. I'm Thank kind you, brother. Away. And um, yeah, I'm gonna see those daughter, see those pictures of your daughter and I. I think we can cut off. Okay. <laughs> the, the camera. As long as everybody. Well, my daughter was born about eighteen and a half months ago, and I was kind of at a loss of how to raise her. Hmm. And it just occurred to me one day to uh, find out how the Prophet Muhammad, as we see upon him, raised his, how he uh, interacted with Fatima, we see upon her. And it really stuck a chord with me. And that was, that was my answer. So, uh, you know, every brother and sister here who's a parent, if you had no idea how to raise your child properly, I mean, it's a terrible dilemma. And uh, Allah, Allah, Allah opened my heart to this. He showed me the way, and I believe it. And that's the way I'm going to do things. And that's that's why I've come here today. I want to become a Muslim. Oh, and I'm not kidding. The media portrays Islam a certain way, and I don't believe anything I hear from them. I have to see this for myself. So, uh, brothers and sisters, this is the first time I have ever seen Muslims pray with my own eyes. And this, this is right. This is correct for me. And I'm so happy to be here. I'm looking forward to learning how to do this properly at the Salah. That's why I was sitting there and, and not really participating, just watching. But uh, I'm ready for this. This is going to, it's going to really help raise my daughter correctly in the way I want her to look at life. There's no compulsion in Islam. She is free to pursue her own destiny as God wants it. And that's, that's fine, but uh, she should have some exposure to Islam. 
So at some point, as she gets older, uh, I'll bring her here so she can watch, if that's okay. <laughs> and uh, this is fine with my wife. Uh, she, my wife is from the Philippines and Christian, and she's okay with it. She's fine with it. So everything I've learned about Islam so far, um, People are welcoming. People care about you. Yeah. you. Care about your brothers. You care about your sisters. And other religions do it too, but there's, there's no really words I, I can say. There's, there's just a feeling in my heart, in my head that Islam has. Uh, Islam is the way for me. You, you have to excuse me, brothers and sisters. I, I never speak publicly like this, but. I feel all his presence here right now in my in my heart. So I'm comfortable right now. I have, I have peace in my heart right now, and I'm so I'm so grateful to be here. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. What? Okay, we're going to say the Shahada three times in Arabic, inshallah, one time in English. Yeah. That should have been the sermon. sermon. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for touching our hearts, uh, Mark. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. أن أن لا لا إله إله إلا إلا الله الله و و أشهد أشهد أن أن محمدا محمدا رسول رسول الله الله ومتان أشهد أشهد أن لا أن لا إله إله إلا الله إلا الله الله و و أشهد أشهد أن أن محمدا محمدا رسول الله رسول الله last time if we join أشهد أشهد أن لا أن لا إله إله إلا الله إلا الله و و أشهد أشهد أن أن محمدا Muhammad, Rasulullah, Rasulullah, I bear witness, I bear witness that there is no God, that there is no God except Allah, except Allah, and I bear witness, and I bear witness that Muhammad, that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, is the messenger of Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد تكبير 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 congratulations brother Mark congratulations thank you so much he wrote this morning brother Mark wrote in these fifty four years I've been in my sin and today these 54 years of sin will be wiped out. Takbir! This is a big moment. The angels are witnessing, God is witnessing. And we invite no hugs. We invite elbow bumps. <laughs> elbow bumps to Brother Mark to show, to show our love. To say, Mark, you're part of this community, inshallah. You might get some elbow bumps when I stand, Mark. <laughs> ولا البدر علينا في الجنة في 
وجب شكر علينا مدى لله دا طلع البدر علينا من وجب الشكر علينا فجاء لله دا صلى صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 لا اله الا الله اتيناك بالفقر يا دلوينا وانت الذي لم تزل محسنا الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 لا اله الا الله صلى الله